Okay, so anyway, this is Janice. My name is Janice Aldridge. Welcome to Ponderosa Pond. We're out in East Tennessee, and we're glad you're coming along for our little adventure. We hope you have as much fun as we do. Okay, so anyway, this is Janice again from Ponderosa Pond Homestead. And uh, when I had done fencing in the past, it um, was a lot flatter terrain. That goes uphill and uh, very uneven. This is just out in the woods. We have worked on flattening it out some, but there's a limit to what you can do. I mean, obviously, we can't take the whole hill down. Um, and we don't want to anyway. So, I was a lot younger then too, and it was a lot flatter. So there's a lot of different things. You, you have your basic skills for doing fencing, and I, I looked up YouTube videos <laughs> trying to find somebody that did sheep and goat fencing in an area like this. And that you just don't come across. Most people just run barbed wire and electric fencing for this kind of terrain. And around here, that's all they run. But we don't really have anyone around with a... We do have one farm that has goats. They have the boar goats. They run... Um, but they also have... They don't have trees or anything on their area. It's not quite as wild as ours. But they run just the barbed wire and electric fence too. So most people just run barbed wire and electric fence and we don't. We really want the sheep and goat fencing because we're gonna be running goats in here. And this area is not really suitable for cattle. It's suitable for goats. That's why we decided to go with goats. Okay, so let me show you the end product. <sighs> when it is attached, We've got a pin here, piece of wire holding it up there at the top, piece of wire down here, yeah. piece of wire down here, and then one down there. So we attach it in three places. Now, we're gonna have to do a little bit of straightening this up because it's gotten a little bit wobbly. We may have to put another one in. Um, I'll have to check that again and see because the fencing we didn't get that tight enough so that is a bit of a problem matter of fact let me come up here and see if we even attached it up here or if the pole has just kind of gotten wobbly yeah we'll probably just have to put another pole in to give it more security this is the problem too is we don't have goats yet so all this this is just from one one summer so all this stuff needs to be cut down um and when we get goats we'll just walk through the whole perimeter and just cut everything down my tripod's getting stuck in everything <laughs> okay so let me set up the tripod and let's see if we can work on this fencing a little bit better get it a little bit straighter and get some of these ties in for you so you can see how this little tool works and uh yes they have a wonderful little tool that works great okay let me see here yeah okay so my uh, dog will run off with this my knee pads my dog will run off with it if i set it on the ground until I'm ready to use it so I don't put it on there but with this we haven't attached this part of the fence yet so what I'm going to do is kind of pull it and adjust it and line the pole up now we are using welded wire fencing and it is important to remember there is a difference between woven wire fencing and welded wire fencing. So, we are using welded wire fencing. 
And the next one goes all the way down. You want this, you want the wire to be on the same side. Doesn't matter which side, but you're going to want the wire to be on the same side all the way down. Ugh. Okay, and it's going to be kind of tight. You, can, you have a little leverage, a little bit, with your pole. And like I said, we have very uneven terrain, so that causes a little bit of problems too. All right, we've got, uh-oh, whoops. Okay, it's in my pocket. I thought I'd lost my tool already. Okay, so... We have this nice little tool here, a fencing tool. And uh, let me tell you, this thing works absolutely amazing. So, wish I had somebody up here so that we could look at it real close and see. Let me bring the tripod up a little bit closer so that you can see what it is we're doing. Up pretty close. Now you can get lots of videos on how to uh, use this tool and attach the wire but there no, that's a little bit better now you can really see i've got it hooked on these and you want this to go all the way down the same exact side all the way down your pole now with our rough terrain sometimes our poles are straighter than others um, but you want this wire fencing you can always add an extra pole and give it a little bit more stability um, some people say every 12 foot is good. Some people say four or six. Uh, we are doing every eight foot for a pole and, uh, it may be a little bit more than what we need, but we kind of thought that would be better. Um, yeah, it costs us a little bit more, but I don't want the goats to get out. I don't want anything to be able to get in. Okay, so on the top one, going to hook this one. Let me get it hooked first. Oh, yeah. Let me double check. Maybe doing it backwards. So let me go up and look at one real quick to make sure we try to do on this one. Okay. No, I was doing it good. Okay. So, you're going to hook this little hook on your fence. Whoops. And, set the tool down for now. You're going to hook the little hook. On the fence, bring it around the back, and there you go, and hook it on the other side. Now there's a lot of people that do a lot better job than I do, so watch some more YouTube videos. Just look up welded wire fencing, how to install it, and you will find videos where they use this tool. So, this little thing here. We're gonna stick. My hands don't work so good. That happens when you get older sometimes. But, like I said, you can watch some videos on them. And lots of people do much better. So I wiggle this little part in there into the hole. And then all you have to do is literally just twist it up. Just twist it up and then wiggle it off of the pole. That's the problem. This one does a whole lot better. This one, all you do is stick it in that hook and you twist that and push it all the way up and then you hook into it on the back side here and pull this one down. Pull it down. And that's pretty good. Now that also has brought this up 
where I can hook on to this little thing a little bit easier. When it's done, it ain't going nowhere. Now, there are other people that just use a pair of pliers, use a screwdriver, um, but I have found this tool to be much easier than using a screwdriver. So. Oh man, my tool, we've been using the tool quite a bit. It's gotten a little bit older and I may need to go buy a new one. We had talked about it this last spring. They're like $15, $16 at the hardware stores. And uh, I think we decided one side was easier to use than another. Yeah, there we go. We may not be able to get that. There we go. If I can get it in there, we're good. I may have to go get my pliers. I got it and you get it once you hook it up you just rotate that thing back and there you go <laughs> and it's on my tool really good there we go and then you come back over here and just give this a good push and that fence is there and it's not going to move off the pole so, look, nothing is textbook style. I know, I've watched some of these. I don't know how many they did to get one perfect. Mine never looked that good. So, just the honesty of life and reality. They do like to tangle up. So, if you don't have a dog that will run off with everything you have, you might just, like, put them out in a bucket somewhere where you can get to them easy and kind of spread them out. My dog, if I set it down, he will get a hold of it. He's very good about getting a hold of everything. Okay, so. Again, we're going to hook this down here on the fence. The top one's a whole lot easier. And hook this one up here. Okay, now let me make sure you can still see that in the video. The one I'm working on. Okay, barely. Okay, so. Once again, I got the little short end hooked on this side. And the longer end on that side, you're supposed to tighten up the short end first from the videos I've seen. So. And we're going to do once again. And if you don't have trigger finger, you'd probably be a whole lot easier on getting that thing to work. Just saying. If your fingers work real well, this really, I've watched these people do it, and it is much easier. But I will tell you this, uh, this is a whole lot easier even for me than trying to do it with with uh, a pair of pliers and a screwdriver which is how some people do it just get a $16 tool especially like this is um we're cutting up about a thousand foot so since we're going to be tying in every eight foot for a thousand foot we decided that this little tool was the way to go. I totally agree. I'm very, very, very glad. Whoops. Came off. Before you start twisting that first one, make sure this second one is hooked like it's supposed to be. Or you'll be sorry. Okay. So I got it. And I twist it. And I push it. 
and this one worked out a whole lot better than the first one. Now then, we'll put this part in here, just in that little hole there. This is the easy part, really. And uh, push, push it up. Then you're gonna go back behind in the hole again, grab it and pull it around. Now that is how it's supposed to do. This one was a little bit harder, the top one, but that worked. So we put three on each one. Uh, some people use up to five, but most people from what I found use three, so we're gonna go with three. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom one. Now, and this is where having your trusty little cane close by, hey, if you can get up and down easy, good for you. Once upon a time, I could too. So like I said, even if you're in great shape and in great health, you know, get you one of these little pads. They're like three or four dollars. Hardware store. I don't remember how much they are. They're just you just go to a hardware store, get something to kneel on. A whole lot easier. Yep. And we got too much grass around here. I dropped. Now, don't think you can just leave these either. Just because you drop one, don't say, oh, well, they're cheap. I'll just come back later. Or I won't worry about it because you got your animals coming in here. You need to pick them up again. You drop it, get it, pick it up. Yeah, it's a little bit cheap. But it ain't going to be cheap if your goats get sick. We had a city kid working for us. He was... He wasn't a bad kid, he just didn't understand that concept. I hope I found all the stuff he left lying around. He said, ah, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. And we had, we had wires everywhere, stuff everywhere. I was like, no, no, no. You have to go through and pick it all up. Not good for the goats. Okay. I have to uh, go around to the back side there. Get this one. He is not wanting to be super, super cooperative. Okay, let me get my hand wiggled through. Now, if you have a second person helping you, what we have done with some of the fencing when we've both been able to work on it, is my husband will be on one side and I'll be on the other. And it is a whole lot easier. You can do it with one person, as you see, and I have seen on plenty of other videos. But it is a whole lot easier to do it if you have somebody to help you. All right, I'm going to get this though. There we go. Now ain't that crazy. Went just as easy as could be, finally. Alrighty, so, oops, make sure that one does not pop out while you're doing it. There we go. And same process. We'll work the tool on, and it really did do a whole lot better when it was newer. So I think uh, we will probably get a new tool. Whoop, don't you come out yet. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Come around to the back side here. Up. And give it a good push, good twist. There you go. So that fence is attached and attached very well. I'll bend down and pick up that tool in a minute. All right. So, like I said, especially if you're in really rough terrain like we are, 
uh, having a cane, not such a bad idea. So that's what we're going to be working on. Do a few more of these. And uh, I think it'll be really well worth it for the goats. It's just uh, one of those little chores you have to do. But once you get the fencing put up and you get it up proper, you'll be able to run goats and you will be secure and knowing that the fence is not coming down. So hope everybody's having a wonderful day. We will talk to you later. I'm Janice from Ponderosa Pond Homestead. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoy living out here in East Tennessee. We live in the Smoky Mountains and it's a beautiful area. We do most of our videos from our homestead, but we do occasionally just in the surrounding areas also. So if you would like to see more of these videos, then subscribe to our channel and ring that little notification bell. That way YouTube will let you know every time we upload a new video. We hope you enjoy them as much as we do. You all have a wonderful day.